in this video a circuit that is able uh, to translate in a certain way frequencies to a certain voltage and better said a certain current. The schematic is here. I hope it's visible from this distance. I had to glue uh, some papers, pieces of paper together due to all the experiments that I did before this circuit worked properly and was good enough to publish it on YouTube so that it did not have too much critical factors. And here the circuit on the breadboard. It is made with a 555 chip. That's a very popular, well-known chip. And here you see a few of them that I bought recently. Here the type number is NA555. And it also, also has a kind of mark on it. A E and also this number. Anyway, uh, I think chips or uh, 555 chips of many manufacturers will work without any problem. I did a few experiments in the past with that 555 chip. Also chips from um, Eastern Europe from the 1980s and the results were mixed anyway. The 555 chip is driven at its input and it is pin 2 by a frequency and it converts that frequency to a certain voltage. In other words voltage but of course also current and here we have a microamperameter and that microamperameter, the pointer of that meter moves, of course, due to the current directly related to the frequency. And here is the whole setup. Uh, there are many things to tell about this circuit. At first about the meter and this resistor. This is resistor X. I tested that first with a 1K potentiometer to say uh, tune that microamperameter to its best properties. And I found out that uh, this resistor is quite critical. And here you see the things that I found. That value of that resistor here depends on the DC resistance of the microamperameter. I've used here a microamperameter with a resistance of 300 ohms and this was my tuning potentiometer to tune that uh, microamperameter in. It is 1K for test purposes, but finally I found that I had to set that resistor here to uh, 340 ohms. So that's important when you want to make this circuit. Uh, it doesn't work lower than uh, 300 hertz, it doesn't work above 3 kilo hertz and you have to find this resistor out. Anyway, it works very properly. Let me demonstrate that. This is the generator that's now hooked up to the input. We can choose square waves or sine waves. I use now sine waves. Frequency approximately 2.9 kilohertz, say 3 kilohertz. That's the maximum frequency that this circuit can handle. And let's look at the meter when we uh, bring that frequency down. 
So, three uh, kilo cycles, 2.5 kilo cycles, 2 kilo cycles, 1.5 kilo cycles, 1 kilohertz, 0 0.9 uh, kilohertz. I have to switch over the uh, the meter and now we are on the say one kilohertz band uh, no not a one kilohertz band it's lower so this is uh, 0 0.9 multiplied by 100 so it's 90 Hertz and we have to go now to uh, 300 Hertz that's the minimum frequency where it works properly this is 1.5 that is 150 Hertz 200 Hertz and we are now on 300 Hertz and you can see now that the pointer starts to move of course, this is a very, say, simple uh, macrobarometer. It's a, uh, a meter of an old tuner, but when you want to do serious uh, measurements or make this circuit, use this circuit in a measurement application, it's much better to use, for instance, a meter like this with a big scale so that you can easily read out all the frequencies and this scale has also a mirror on its uh, backside that makes the reading out of the values much uh, easier uh, anyway well, that was the frequency band that I wanted to show. Um, there are a few things more. Uh, this is a resistor that is in series with that uh, microparameter. And that value is critical. That's important to tell. Um, so it depends on the micro parameter that you use. For instance, with this meter, you could need another resistor here, and I've tested that first with a 1K potentiometer, and that's a good idea. When it all works fine, um, change it to a fixed value resistor. Um, the 5L5 chip, the, the input is made with a BC547 and I found that the 5L5 chip needs a specific voltage on its input, AC voltage. When that voltage uh, is too high, the chip is not stable and when it is too low, it doesn't work. That's of course very logical. And I've made here an input circuit with one transistor and two capacitors of 0 0.47 microfarad and here a capacitor that drives the input of the 555 and that capacitor has a value of 100 nanofarad. Important to keep that in mind. And here the voltages that I measured 300 Hertz 0 0.2 volts, uh, 3000 Hertz 1.3 volts. But of course we are talking here about a meter that's driven with current. So uh, that's important and that's also why the name of this video uh, tells that the 555 chip uh, 
drives the current into a microamperimeter. Uh, it doesn't matter much when we look at the frequency uh, whether we drive this by a uh, square wave or a sine wave and that's good 2.9 uh, kilohertz sine wave switch it to square wave and we don't see any change on the meter and that's of course good that means that the 555 chip is not sensitive in a certain way to the waveform but on the other hand it could be that um, waveforms with this type are detected in another way. I have to study that but I think the circuit is good enough to be used in uh, all kinds of applications, say a tachometer or whatever meter and when you mount here for instance a frequency divider with CTTL chips or CMOS chips that divide a higher frequency into a lower frequency uh, you can use this very simple circuit also for high frequency applications that could be interesting <laughs>